Here we go. Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the back of the Jeep. I know the lighting is really bad. It's just this one right here because I'm recording this at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, this is what I get for being busy all weekend. A um, couple things I wanted to hit on that have related to past shows, so I really wanted to hit on these. I'll do the serious one first. Um, and yeah, I've got a small cheat sheet. I did... Okay, not, not as much research as like normal, but just enough so that I can kind of uh, mention this. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled on a couple of things before the weekend started, and one of the ones that seems to have flown under the radar for a lot of people is the Stolen Valor Act. Uh, they declared the Stolen Valor Act unconstitutional. For those of you who might remember uh, the Tactical 13 and 14, I think it is, uh, where I was talking about wearing military insignia and stuff like that, uh, Stolen Valor Act actually feeds right into that, because uh, the Stolen Valor Act was signed, I think, in 2005 by George W. Bush, and it was, um, the idea of it was to make it a one-year imprisonment at least, I think. Um, if you were uh, representing yourself as military by wearing military insignia, selling military insignia, and um, me specifically medals is what they were going after. And um, this week the Supreme Court has declared it unconstitutional. Um, from what I read, what they were basically trying to get away from is the whole idea of having a ministry of truth. Because they did not, they, the First Amendment, as much as you don't like it, the First Amendment protects freedom of speech. Speech you don't like, speech that you find reprehensible, but freedom of speech. So if you guys want to argue this in the comment section, feel free to do so. I'm going to be bowing out of it, only because I know I'm not a legal expert. And there's been a lot of people who have been arguing this. Now, a couple things to mention, though. Um, when the Supreme Court did their, had their ruling on this. One thing they pointed out was that the they wanted con they basically opened the door for Congress to tighten up the wording a little bit, because that was the problem with the Stolen Valor Act is that the wording was a little bit too broad for the Supreme Court. So this is not dead. This, the whole concept isn't dead in the water here. They've invited Congress. No, please try again. Make it a little tighter. Make it more specific, and they'd be probably happy with that. The other thing they pointed out was that there are a lot of laws on the books already that cover stuff in the Stolen Valor Act. Um, on a very, very, very casual Google search. Very casual. Um, Title 32, the National Defense, Part 507, covers everything. Uh, so what is, how does this relate to paintball? This is really the whole point of this. Well, um, some people are saying, oh yeah, now you can wear insignia. Ah, no you can't. There's still laws that say that you can't wear military insignia, you can't represent yourself as part of the military. So if you're going to go out there in ACU, or any type of official looking uniform, stay away from a stay away from the official stuff. Don't wear rank, don't wear US Army or US Marines or US whatever name tape unless you happen to be in the service and even then I'd talk to your CO first, honestly. Uh, don't wear any patches for uh, any anything like that. Just go on, just don't do it. It's just a bad idea. It's playing with fire. Very very bad idea. Just stay away from that. Um, just because Stolen Valor Act has been declared unconstitutional does not mean that you're not going to get your ass kicked by somebody who's going to be taking offense that you're wearing a unit patch from a unit that he was in and you were not. That's what I'm just, that, that's all I'm saying on this. Okay, we got the, we got the serious stuff out of the way. Let's do some fun stuff here. Um, and this is also, I was going to do an entire thing for this, but, uh, not really in the mood to. You guys know I'm a Mountain Dew fiend. Um, of course this isn't really helping. I have here a bottle of New Dew and a bug. Um, this is Mountain Dew Dark Berry, right over here. So I figured with you guys, I would share this with you guys, because uh, I would do like, um, I was thinking about doing an entire video of uh, back here, but not really what I wanted the channel to be. But since you guys know I'm a Dew Fiend, it's got a really, uh, you know, it, it kind of smells like, you know, bubble gum, uh, bubble gum, berry bubble gum. And that doesn't bode very well for me, but this is the Dark Berry Mountain Dew. Mm. Almost tastes grape. It almost has like a very grape flavor to it, which is odd. Um, I can kind of see it sense the berry undertones there, but it's not really. Um, it's almost more grape. Jeez, that's not right. Well, anyway, um, not bad, not not bad at all. But uh, honestly, it's. Uh, mm, mm. I mean, I'll finish the bottle. I'll finish the bottle, but, uh, uh, yeah, give me the original Dew any day. <sighs> Not the greatest. All right, so there you guys go. So a couple of things to update. There will be more shows coming up this week. If you got a request for a show, comment down below. 
Let me know what you guys want to see. I've got some other stuff that I can do. Um, also, um, st still doing stuff for Behind the Bunker. That'll be uh, Monday night, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you'll I'll put a link down there to where you can find it. They do a live show, and there's going to be a web dog section in the show. So uh, we'll catch you guys later on in the week. See you then. And turn off the camera.